Now that you've filled out and submitted those primary applications, it is now time for the often dreaded secondary applications. It's often dreadful because of the amount and the volume that you will have to fill out. But in this video, I'll be teaching and kind of giving some advice about how to organize your secondary essays, how to get them out on time, some tips in filling them out, and also go through some examples from my application last cycle that allowed me to get into medical school. Let's get into it. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you who may be new to my channel, my name is Terrence and I'm an incoming first year medical student. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and like these videos if you enjoy the video. I'll be putting out weekly videos just like this one every single week, so make sure you come along for the journey. Now that secondary season is upon us at the time that I'm making this video, I wanted to discuss some tips that I learned when writing my secondary essays, some things that I did to stay organized and also uh, go through some examples with you uh, from my actual secondary essay. I had to write about 50 plus essays for 20 schools that I applied to last cycle. And there was a lot of things that I kind of learned along the way that I think helped me uh, get in the door for a lot of my interviews. The first thing that you should take into account when it comes to filling out secondary essays is to definitely be prepared from the jump. You cannot necessarily always prepare fully. You can't always pre-write every single essay, but it's important to have an idea of what to expect. There are websites out there that have a lot of the secondary essays from the previous years available. And it's important to have a list of all the secondary essays that the schools that you're applying to uh, require. The next thing when it comes to that preparation is staying organized. I'll put on the screen here the log that I used that allowed me to stay organized during my secondary essay season. Uh, the biggest thing for me was keeping everything organized and understanding that I had uh, deadlines to meet. A lot of people see that the secondary essays are due, you know, November, October, uh, in the fall, and they kind of wait and put it off. But the thing that you need to understand is first and foremost to get those secondaries back as soon as possible, typically within a 10 to 14 day window. Some schools will give you a deadline. Other schools will allow you to submit it whenever. But it's important to stay on top of those schools, especially the ones that you really, really want to get into. I believe that getting those secondaries in fast and with quality will help you in getting your foot in the door for those interviews. So staying organized, having the, the date that you received it, a deadline for yourself, and also whether that secondary is in progress, has been submitted, uh, just so you don't forget, there was a situation where I thought I had submitted an essay and then I kind of went into the portal, just double checking everything and realized that I didn't actually hit the submit button. So it's important to stay super, super organized and make sure you're on top of everything. So now that we've discussed the more organizational side of getting the secondaries in with quality and on time, I want to now go into my secondary applications and some examples that I wrote personally. I think this will be very, very beneficial for some of you guys that are writing yours to understand the kind of quality that you may want to look for, uh, whether that's better or you know at the same level as mine. The first one I wanna go through is here is, uh, if you have any specific reasons for attending our medical school. So this is actually a secondary essay for SUNY Downstate that I wrote. And it asks, you know, why do you want to come to our school essentially, or why us, why our school? And this is the essay that I wrote. Just for an idea, this one is about 1500 characters uh, or 1800 characters with spaces, 1500 without spaces. So here's my example, growing up in a family of educators, my mom and aunts being teachers, principals and administrators, education has always been emphasized as the key to success. To me, education is not simply a list of requirements requested by an instructor, but an opportunity and an opportunity to develop as an individual, grow into your mold, overcome hardship and excel. It is the door to meeting mentors and establishing relationships and a chance to express creativity and innovation. It is my belief that SUNY Downstate College of Medicine embodies these same sentiments and education providing medical students with the essential foundations for their careers. So I first want to stop there and just talk about the picture that I painted here. I talked about, you know, and painted this picture of education because to me, education was something growing up that was uh, really put on this pedestal of, you know, you need this in order to be successful. And I've found it personally to be something that's really gotten me through a uh, life that, uh, you know, allowed me to succeed in life by just having a good education, understanding that you could grow through education and understand that there's so many different things that you could get from uh, education. So I wanted to share that, but I also wanted to make that tie with SUNY Downstate. I want to kind of say it is my belief that you guys share the same passion for education that I do and kind of mold our uh, interests together in that way so that they see that, hey, this is how I view things and this is how I believe that you view it in the same way. So continuing on, 
Um, SUNY Downstate initially drew me in with its integrated pathways curriculum, which will expose me to a combination of basic science and clinical medicine from year one. So just talking about some things that I like about the school, first thing that stuck out was the curriculum. This integrated curriculum will also lend me the opportunity to learn from experienced mentors along the way and collaborate with physicians and students. With extensive and established research facilities, my appetite for innovative research and novel science will be filled. Uh, again, talking about the school and what they I feel that they could bring me. Um, SUNY Downstate offers a variety of research opportunities and funding, which gives me the option to pursue my, my research interests. So the biggest thing that I, I'm seeing kind of taking away here as I'm doing it on the fly is to really say that what you like about the school, but also give evidence. So I talk about the ability to be a combination of basic science and clinical medicine my first year. Then I talked about an example of how I would be able to do that. Same thing with the research, the funding, um, and the research opportunities that they provide, giving evidence to back up my claims that they are, I'm attracted for these generic reasons, but here are the details be underlying that the school provides that will allow me to, to uh, fulfill my needs. So for furthermore, the location of the patient population in SUNY Downstate and its emphasis on the underserved community will allow me to gain the humility, cultural sensitivity, perspective, and interpersonal skills that all great doctors possess. With this com combined emphasis on an integrated curriculum, patient care, research, and mentorship, SUNY Downstate is a medical school that matches my interests and passion. It is my strong belief that SUNY Downstate College of Medicine will provide me with the guidance, perspective, and challenge necessary to become an excellent physician. So the first level is me kind of talking about what i really uh look for in education the the value i place in education saying that they kind of share that same sentiment and also giving uh some evidence talking about two or three different things that really pop out to me or what attracts me to the school and it's okay if you feel that it's generic um it's very very hard and sometimes schools won't even ask this question because they know that they're just going to get generic answers and that's okay but it's important to stay true to yourself. If there's something that really pops out to you that you want to emphasize and you want to mention, make sure that you emphasize it and mention it. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like you're being too, too generic. Make sure you do a thorough research. But at the same time, if there are certain things that you feel uh, you're attracted to and you just feel that they're just generic things, you know, don't be deterred by that. Just, just go after what you think and make sure you leave evidence for not only things that uh, you're attracted to based off of your experience, but also leave things, uh, give details for what they would be able to provide uh, to help you get uh, that fulfillment and get that nourishment um, of your passion. So the next thing I want to talk about is a challenge or obstacle that you may have faced and how you can write it in your application. For me, I know that there are so many different uh, challenges and hurdles out there, whether that's uh, grade hurdles, whether that is you know family hurdles, you know somebody passing away in the family, economic issues, financial issues, or mental issues uh, personally for you. Um, there are different hurdles, and this is not meant to be a pity party. This is not meant to be who could have the the toughest upbringing or toughest story. It's meant for you to just show that you how you handle challenges, how you overcome obstacles, and how you push through them. So in this example, I talk about a personal self identity issue that I kind of. Uh, went through as I was going and pursuing medicine. So here it is right here. Uh, so one of the greatest hurdles I have overcome was one of self-identity. Since middle school, I've often been perceived by others as an athlete first. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I was a competitive athlete my whole life. I was recruited to play uh, Division three college basketball, and I eventually did play college basketball for a couple of years before I transferred and uh, chose to you know, go pursue medicine a little bit harder. Um, so I've always been perceived as an athlete first, and that was really my my struggle, and I'm kind of going to go into it here. So, however, as, as I began my pursuit towards medicine, I wanted my peers to view me as an intellectual and compassionate person before just label, labeling me the basketball player. Uh, the immediate negative stereotypes of being labeled an athlete caused me to question whether I fit the mold of what I believed a physician to be. So, in your head, you just think about when you're growing up what a physician looks like. Like I mentioned um, in a previous video, you know, not having that representation in medicine, you kind of see a physician, you know, whether that you're a, a, a female and you just see a physician as, as a, a male or that's a minority student um, seeing a physician as, you know, white. Or So that negative stereotype and also the negative stereotype of athletes um, really kind of deterred me a little bit from wanting to express that side of me, which was the athletic side, the athlete side, the sports guy. Um, I didn't want that to cause people to think that, oh, I'm just this like dumb jock that thinks he could go into medicine. So I kind of took myself away from that um, mentality a little bit. 
So I observed the mainstream media admire athletes from a physical and entertainment standpoint, but diminish what they possess mentally or stood for politically. On my pre-med pursuit, I would often avoid sharing my athletic history. I did not want to feel as though the countless hours I put into my studies and volunteerism were meaningless simply because my stature and athletics background. So you guys kind of know if you follow anything about sports or, you know, politics and stuff like that, you know, people, the whole shut up and dribble, um, stance that was taken by, you know, guys like LeBron James and, and Kevin Durant in the NBA. Um, just because of the perception that, you know, athletes cannot stand up for what they believe for politically and you should just stick to sports and different things like that. So that's how I felt that I was often perceived um, by other people just in my own head. Um, and I'm going to go into a little bit uh, more here. So I slowly overcame my insecurity by learning to put greater value on my self perception rather than internalizing the possible perception of others. I came to view my athletic history as what made me unique instead of what stunted my growth. So there's now me talking about what I'm doing to combat it. I doubled down on what I loved instead of fearing judgment. It was this self-awareness that allowed me to integrate my passions for care, sports, and community to create a strength and conditioning program and co-found my own charity basketball tournament. Overcoming this obstacle has inspired me to challenge the stereotype and provide new perspectives on the unlimited potential athletes possess. So not just talking about how I overcame it, but giving some details. So I overcame this by doubling down and I'm giving details from my application, kind of what I did to make that difference and, and make that difference in my life to, to make that change. Um, I think that this is something that isn't the craziest struggle. Um, it's just a personal struggle that I went through and, and probably a lot of applicants may go through, whether that's a self doubt or, um, you know, the imposter syndrome, but I wanted to highlight it on my application because I didn't necessarily face a financial issue. I didn't necessarily face a issue with grades. You know, I had a tough semester, but the tough semester was like a three, five. It wasn't like, you know, a 2.0 GPA or anything like that. So there was nothing really I had to overcome from, you know, a life standpoint, but just more of an internal uh, standpoint. So I wanted to highlight this and I hope that you guys can kind of get an idea uh, if you're trying to write something similar to this. And the last thing that I want to go through now is a diversity essay. So how can you contribute to the diversity of our school? How can you contribute to the diversity of our campus? Um, this essay is very, very common. And a lot of people have the misperception of thinking that this means that, you know, as a as a white applicant, how can I provide diversity? I'm white uh, or as a you know African-American applicant or Hispanic applicant or Asian African, how can I bring more of that diversity to the campus through my race and ethnicity. Although that can be true, although you, although you can bring cultural diversity, um, there is other ways to have diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of action, diversity of uh, intuition. Um, you could be compassionate. You could be very driven through your know, desire to improve weaknesses in your, in your community and different things like that. If you want to contribute your race and ethnicity, that is amazing. And you should definitely do that. I didn't focus on that specifically. Uh, I want to focus on something else, but I wanted to kind of just break down that stigma that if you are somebody that is applying and you see this question of diversity, it shouldn't be, you know, how many Hispanic people you've talked to in your life and how that's going to make you more diverse. You know, it should be um, how how you feel in, inside that's going to make you uh, unique and bring out something unique to the, the student body and help your student body grow um, as a whole. So. My one here is talking about uh, my int interest in taking initiatives and, and desire to improve weaknesses. So I'm going to go into it here. This is actually one from uh, the school that I'm going to, Sydney Kimmel Medical College. And uh, we're going to go into it right here. So this is my diversity essay. I pride myself on being someone who takes initiative and has the desire to improve weaknesses. Some of my most fulfilling experiences have been rooted in the desire to shine light on white spaces that I felt lacked attention. My initiatives in developing a strength and conditioning program at my high school alma mater, co-founding my own charity tournament, and experiences in research have all taught me the value of being an instigator of change. Additionally, as an undergrad student, my drive to make a difference was exemplified by my efforts to improve the infrastructure of our pre-med society. It is my belief that I can contribute to the Sydney Kimmel Medical College student body and community in similar ways by providing initiative, a passion for discovery, and forward thinking. This first half of the essay is me saying, you know, what do I like to do and giving evidence behind uh, that that uh, uniqueness that I feel I will bring. And 
it's important to have evidence um not just say that i'm going to bring this thing because i'm going to bring this thing but why should i believe that you will be bringing these things what have you done to show me that these are things that you can contribute to our school uh, so having that evidence is, is super super important so it's important to dig deep into your application and the things that you've done to be able to provide evidence uh here so the second half now is me kind of saying how this is what i feel i can contribute and this is how i believe your school will help me get to where i need to be and, and help me become and nurture uh that passion that i have similar to why i want to go to your school essay where you're kind of talking about how the school will nurture you uh it's important to make those highlights here and kind of make the feel school feel good about everything that they have that kind of matches your interests so sydney kimmel medical college shares the same passion for community service and education innovation that i do I look forward to diving headfirst into a scholarly inquiry track and growing an inquisitive mind through research. I look forward to offering a helping hand to surrounding communities through patient care and education with Sydney Kimmel's HOPE and YES programs respectively. I'm eager to unite with students and faculty and the Philadelphia community to impact the underserved and dial in on details in patient care that may often go unnoticed. So now tying back into my theme, again, initiative, desire to make improvements and, and weaknesses and fill in those white spaces um, that I felt lack attention and showing how Sydney Kimmel does it themselves and how I want to be a part of that and how I'm going to help push that forward and even create maybe new lanes within their uh, current established foundation and infrastructure. So I think it's important, very, very important to show not only how you can bring that diversity, how you can bring that innovation, how you can bring that something unique, but also show how that school is going to help nurture it. It's, it's very easy to get into that situation where you're, you're trying to bring something diverse and you're trying to show you're ambitious and you want to make change. You want to do all these different things, but it's, it's sometimes comes off too, too much. You know, if you're just talking about yourself, you're just talking about, I want to do this, 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 I'm, I'm very, very unique and blah, blah, blah. Like, it could come off as too ambitious and overly ambitious. So it's important to tie in what the school will do to help tame that ambition and, and make you a better person. And I think schools uh, probably like hearing about uh, you know, wh why you want to go to their school and why they're so great at the same time. So I think it's important to tie those things in. This essay was actually, and this, this kind of ties onto another point, but this essay was actually not um, asked. It wasn't asked like, do you want to bring diversity to my school? This was actually a, uh, essay that I've written or kind of structured from other essays uh, about diversity or other diversity essays that I've written. But this essay is actually asking, you know, do you have any additional information that hasn't been covered? So that, that was really the only secondary that they asked. And if you have a situation where a school asks, do you have any additional information? If there's anything you haven't covered yet, I'd like to, and if they haven't asked a, a diversity question, I like to use a diversity essay because I felt it was one of my stronger essays. And it was also a situation where I was able to give the school a different side of me um, that was, wasn't portrayed in my primary or secondary applications. I wasn't able to specifically say all these things, um, but I felt that giving this diversity essay incorporated, you know, why I want to go to school, but also uh, what I feel I could bring to the school. And I also use these uh, additional information to fill in any gap year uh, jobs that I would be doing um, if they hadn't asked about them and different things like that. You could also use them to talk about some of the weaknesses on your applications or uh, anything that you, you would like to get addressed. Um, I think that additional information that hasn't been covered essays are great, great, great uh, tools. A lot of times they're optional, but I would definitely, definitely write something if it hasn't been covered. Use this as an opportunity. Definitely fill out the additional information essays if you can. I think it just gives schools a little bit more insight on you and helps you out in the long run. So that's the end of this video. I want to leave a last piece of advice, which is make sure you take the same effort and the same emphasis that you place on that those primary applications on these secondary applications a lot of people kind of just rush through them and think that they're just like a quick question and answer but you have to put in that same time and that same energy you will find yourself kind of repeating essays and, and copying pasting here and there and switching things around it's important to understand that that will happen and don't feel guilty if you do that do do that there's so many so many essays that you have to write and it's important to kind of have that structure and that template and be able to uh, fill in the information uh, based on the specific school and the specific reasons why you want to go to those schools so that it matches their mission if you're new make sure you subscribe like the video if you enjoy these videos i'll be putting out weekly videos just like this one every single week good luck on your secondaries if you would like for me to review some of your secondaries don't hesitate to email me good luck and let's get it